I remember the bell. And they rang everywhere. And when the bell went off, you did something. At the time when uh, I went there, it was customary that uh, parents would enroll their children when they were born, the day after they were born, because they wanted to be sure they'd get in. There's no question that the school had a great sense of tradition. And this tradition was very much rooted in that straight-laced New England, late 19th century sense of discipline and of doing things for other people and to those to whom much has been given, much is expected. There is this thing called social class in America. I think it's one of the most avoided subjects we have. No one really talks about it in a sense. It's the dirty little secret of American life. An aristocracy has always been in existence in this country, and what America prides itself on is that the aristocracy is not a fixed and closed class, but rather one uh, that, ha that promises access if you can prove yourself worthy. There are not many of them. Only about 325 teenagers on just a few acres of land, boys and girls carefully selected from all over the country. For most of the year, they call this boarding school, nestled quietly in the Massachusetts countryside, home. Mm -hmm. These are the children of Groton, an elite band who will receive an education that is confident demanding and steeped in tradition. At the turn of the century, a small group of Protestant patricians stood at the center of our national economic and cultural life. They sent their children to schools like Groton. Groton was an Episcopal school educating Christian gentlemen. They were of Eastern Anglo-Saxon stock. There were no girls, no blacks no Jews, no Catholics. Its legendary headmaster, the Reverend Endicott Peabody, said that Groton School stands for everything that is true, beautiful, and of good report. Peabody was only 27 when he founded the school, but with men like J.P. Morgan on the board of trustees, it wasn't difficult to attract the right kind of students. They were often fabulously wealthy, the spoiled children of the rich, Peabody set out to toughen the breed, to build character in his young charges. The model was the Spartan life of the English boarding school. His boys slept in dormitory cubicles, tiny alcoves with cloth curtains for doors. Each boy had an iron bedstead, a bureau, a chair, and a small rug. They washed in tin basins and black soapstone sinks, and each morning enjoyed the austere pleasures of a cold shower. It was an education designed to prepare the boys for responsibility, service, and power. Former students include congressmen, senators, generals, admirals, presidents of the Rockefeller and Carnegie Foundations, chairman of the New York Port Authority, the American Red Cross, the Metropolitan Opera, the list goes on and on. Men like Governor Averill Harriman, Secretary of State Dean Acheson, and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt all left their names carved on its walls. The history is clearly one of privilege. There is no question that a number of the students here are extremely wealthy, uh, very accustomed to doing whatever they want to do in a way that I could only imagine, and still can only imagine, working here. And yet the schools undergone a significant change in its student body and I think that change is something that that we're still struggling with Chapel is home every morning except for Wednesdays and Saturdays and then on Sundays there's Catholic mass and regular mass um, are you Catholic?
Groton was once a school where its students were secure from birth. They were entitled. But America has changed, and so has Groton. A Groton education is still one of the best in the country and assures most of its students of success in one form or another. But the price of success is high, especially for the children of the American dream. I can't let her do all the work. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Vega is a Groton senior. She is an Hispanic girl from the Bronx. Nearly 25% of Groton students receive scholarships. Joe is one of them. I'd grown up in a pretty bad neighborhood in the South Bronx. I remember when I came here, seeing the trees and the grass and the tennis courts and the dorms and the pretty faces. I thought everyone was really pretty. I thought everyone was very good looking, everyone was dressed well, everyone was white. And I was very much seduced by what I saw. And I decided that this place must really be a paradise. It was not a paradise. Um, the first year, I found myself having to adjust completely to a different lifestyle, to a different culture, to different girls. I'd always been around brown people and black people. And now I find myself constantly, 12, 24 hours a day, surrounded by rich white girls who looked at me and just, you know, were like, who are you? What are you doing here? A reminder that this Saturday night at 7 o'clock in the new lecture hall will be the spelling bee. We'll make another announcement later on in the week. But this Saturday night, 7 o'clock, the spelling bee. Kids who come to us out of a minority background are brought into really a very different world. A world where success is assumed. A world in which people are completely different from their experience. At 3 o'clock, and uh, I'm going to be playing. So, <laughs> don't go away. All you girls can come down and watch. What we have to do is to be able to talk to kids and to help them understand who they are. Talk with them about how important their individuality is while they learn maybe another way of being, another vocabulary of behavior. They're going to have to be something else. They just have to be something else. And that's a tragedy. I'm someone who did this sort of thing myself. I came from a factory town in Michigan, and my father was an auto worker. So I've had to come here, and I've uh, as an Episcopal minister, uh, had to adapt to a somewhat different style and a somewhat different look and, a, and, and be a somewhat different person. But I'm in touch with my past, and I'm an adult, and that's a big advantage. I mean, what an impossible task to ask a teenager and adolescent to do, pull off that trick. Many of them do. Many of them do. We know we must bring students here from all parts of America. There has to be a school that reflects America. Why, though, the paradox is that we bring people here to break their hearts.